Today's video is brought to you by Dashlane. Be sure to watch throughout the entirety of this video to learn how to keep your online accounts more secure, 100% free on your first device. I think many of us at this point have heard the anecdote about the music industry being just an extra step more evil than others. And while every business has a dark side, Spotify's dark side in particular has always been interesting to me as it has both interested and perplexed me for how wide open it was for abuse. While on the surface, the company might seem great for a consumer as you simply pay $9.99 and then you have access to the world's library of music, what is yet to be seen by many is what lies beneath the surface, which is an entirely underground world filled with hacking, fraud, botnets, stream farms, and deception. And while you may have heard that Spotify is particularly notorious for not paying artists very well, what many people don't understand is it's not really because there isn't enough money coming in from consumers, or rather piracy stands as the alternative. It's actually quite the contrary. Spotify has 144 million paying monthly subscribers and 320 million total active users, to which the remaining amount actively come back to be served ads. But rather the dark truth surrounding the platform is that it is flawed in such a way that people have taken to using it to actively siphon and defraud money off the platform. And while click fraud and other types exist on every single website on the internet, I think Spotify is a very unique case for a number of reasons, because the points that we're going to cover today raise fundamental question marks about the industry and people who are involved in it, as well as Spotify themselves being completely complicit in this type of fraud. As it stands today, music streaming has become the largest single revenue source for the entire industry. But naturally, you have to ask if the subscription number has continued to go up, then why is it that the value of streams have gone down nearly 35 to 40% in that exact time? And while you might just attribute this to simply more music being released today, what's interesting is that Apple Music has managed to keep their streaming rate relatively stable while the amount has actually gone up since 2016. Anybody looking at these numbers can see a clear trend involving devaluing music and Spotify's growth as a company. And for a company that sees no clear path to profitability as long as they can show investors growth, it has made shifting the goalposts for those artists who built the platform a long-standing joke. It's a tale as old as time, and when you dive into the specifics of how the entire operation has been actively allowing money to be stolen away from artists for the sake of pleasing record labels and their monopolies, when you see the full picture here and where money is being redirected, you'll see this clear dark side to Spotify that makes Apple's anti-competitive app store look like a walk in the park because at least there's some opportunity for the average person who uses that platform to actually make money. Because according to Spotify's own data that they've released in their Q2 report of 2020, the top 98.6% of all artists generated 90% of all of the streams on the platform, and the remaining 98.6% take up 10% of all streams on the platform. And since Spotify is so cleverly pays you based on the percentage of market share in the total pool of streams, this amounts to 107 million euros paid to the bottom 98.6%. This means that 98.6% of people on Spotify made an average of $11 a month, meaning that many of them lost money just to use the service, because this doesn't factor any of the cost that goes into promotion or the creation of music. And does this mean that 98.6% of people simply make really shitty music or that nobody wants to listen to it? No, it's that Spotify has created a system that selectively steals money away from people on the platform without consumers even realizing it. Now, before I attempt to outline the worst types of fraud on Spotify, it's important for you to understand how Spotify works as a whole. And what you need to know is that the company operates under a freemium model. A large amount of bonus features are there for those who pay the monthly fee, and the company also collects advertising revenue for free users. I will note their advertising is not nearly as lucrative as on YouTube, as they don't have nearly as much data on the people who listen. But essentially, all you need to know is that every quarter, Spotify pulls together all of the revenue from the advertising and subscriptions. Hereafter, they take a 30% cut, and then they divide out each fraction of that pool to pay a proportionate amount of revenue. This means that if you got 10% of all of the streams in the United States, you would get 10% of all of the subscription revenue and advertising revenue that came from the United States. 
And just so we're clear at what counts as a stream, it's only 30 seconds of listening to a particular track. This is the way that music sales are structured nowadays, and while this might seem like an honest way of running a business with everyone getting their fair share based on their popularity as an artist, where you start to run into problems is when you add the human element to it. Because with the current system, every time someone inflates their streams in a variety of ways, it steals money from other artists. The more streams in each quarterly pool, the less each one is worth, diluting an honest artist's work. And to say that people inflating their numbers has gotten a bit out of hand is a bit of an understatement. Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? Once again, I'm Nev from Nez Tech, but today I want to talk about phone farms or phone farming. All right, so you're getting into this business and you are looking to get smartphones and you see all of these YouTube channels or uh, you hear of all of the people that are on the forums that have tons of phones and you're wondering, how do I make it to that point? Overview, I am a phone farmer. I use smartphone applications, mainly for Android, to run ads and whatnot to make me some money. On this video, I wanna teach you how to earn money on Spotify, whether you know how to make music or not. Once your music is on Spotify, this is one of my accounts, this is uh, my meditation audio account. The Spotify plays are high quality and they charge $2 per thousand. Basically a 50% return on your investment. Every million uh, streams you get, you get $4,000 back. You get about $4,000. One, two, three, four. Now check out this guy's battle station. I really like what I see here. Once you start generating streams, the Spotify algorithm picks up and it puts you on more popular playlists that will sustain your monthly listeners, right? Hi, uh, today I'm just showing Spotify Plays Booster. Once you have your accounts, which we have a mass account career. It's an application that pays you to stream music through things like Spotify. I'll show you how much Spotify is paying out as of January 2021. <laughs> online but check this out right over here as you can see a payment was sent to me for simply listening to my favorite music or it's users who spend their time and resources listening to music so they're paying us for our time and our hydro and our phone use hey what's up everybody welcome back to another video so that one up right there then we have two current musics going one phone that's also turned off and then two AA musics that's actually running uh, let it play while you sleep so don't even listen to the song really and honestly just let it play in the background uh, if you are not from the US you can download a VNP app make money and I took advantage early and I learned a lot about streaming one month and a half will get you 20 bucks per phone and I call this my music money machine so whenever I want to make a little money I'll click play total earn was 93,876 At a certain point, you have to ask whether this entire system is even better than piracy, because keep in mind, when you pirated a song back in the day, you just stole from one artist at a time. But now when you inflate your streams, you steal from everybody simultaneously. And that's not even mentioning the fact that you open the door for completely unrelated third parties to steal from you as well. Back in 2017, it's believed a single entity out of Bulgaria stole an entire million dollars off the platform. This occurred when a playlist by the name of Soulful Music, containing 467 tracks, all from unknown artists, had appeared out of nowhere, seeming to climb the charts all the way to number 11 as the top playlist in the US. There were only 1,200 active listeners on this playlist. All of them were legitimate sources of revenue and credit cards. And with an average track duration of 43 seconds, it's believed that they squeezed out anywhere from 72 million to 103 million plays per month. This was all dependent on the main contingency of whether or not the stream farm would skip tracks after 30 seconds. While Spotify stated at the time that they were continuing to invest heavily in refining the processes in which that they would detect this type of fraud, you have to understand that this probably isn't the most urgent issue for them because with those $12,000 that they got per month extra in revenue, they're kind of incentivized to keep the stream farm thing going. It really doesn't matter to them whether artists lose their money because at the end of the day, they still get their 30% cut on the top. 
I'd say Daniel Ek, the CEO of Spotify, cares more about his net worth and shareholders. Because the moment that Spotify stops growing is the moment that they're going to stop taking losses and look for profit. And let me ask you this, why would Spotify want to make streaming fair when they could make it competitive and grow even faster? Ultimately, it's up to the labels to fight amongst themselves between who has the biggest artist. And while your everyday fraudsters will make up a portion of that pie, it's nothing compared to the record labels themselves at getting numbers up. And to be fair, Spotify does make some effort to combat obvious forms of streaming fraud, but to say that they've even put a considerable dent in the overall problem is a pretty good joke. And one estimate from Rolling Stone, who interviewed a record label at the time, estimated the total fraud that goes through Spotify yearly could be around $300 million to artists. And while $300 million a year in fraud is really bad for the entire system, keep in mind that stream dilution affects smaller artists even more. For instance, Justin Bieber is allowed to encourage his fans to fundamentally steal money away from other artists on the platform. But when an indie band uploads a silent song so they can have enough money to go on tour, the record label will then tell Spotify to remove the indie band's song. While two wrongs definitely don't make a right, you could definitely make an argument that someone like Justin Bieber, who has a far larger audience, does more objective damage but does not get punished. And realistically, for the record labels to continue to stick around, they have to keep power coming back to the top, even if it means using sketchy tactics that they will often impose selective enforcement to others for. If you recall, I said that the labels were the best at inflating their numbers, and perhaps one story you may not be fully aware of is the day that YouTube purged billions of their views. On December 19th, 2012, users flooded to the Google Help forums. Many people were asking why countless numbers of their videos had been deleted off the platform. And throughout the winter cleaning, nearly every mainstream artist was collateral damage. Whether this was fully intentional or not, that is yet to be unknown, but what we do know is that at the time, YouTube staff confirmed that this was an enforcement of their policies. A hundred plus million was deleted from Lady Gaga's channel, 400 million was deleted from Chris Brown's channel, 850 million from Sony BMG, 156 million from RCA, a billion views from Universal Music Group, and countless, countless others. Billboard was quick to come to the defense of the labels in this situation and cited this as just some in-house cleanup. Further attempts to explain this away had cited that many of the record labels had just simply started posting on their Vivo channel instead. Now what's hilarious here is that even if we gave them the benefit of the doubt, after I looked into the inception of Vivo as a company, you're just one trip to the Wayback Machine to have your mind blown at just how fake the entire industry is. And taking a look at the first capture that shows up for Michael Jackson Vivo, he managed to get a half a billion views on his Vivo channel despite his main channel not even being able to cross 2 million, along with more subscribers than the main channel. And if you go through every other Vivo channel that existed at the inception of Vivo's launch, with many of them having hundreds of millions of views with next to no engagement on their channel whatsoever. And how about we bring up the official Vivo channel itself? Now, I'm no mathematician, but 12 billion views and 4,000 subscribers and 66,000 channel views seems a bit low. Here, it supposedly states that the YouTube channel signed up in 2006, but Vivo wasn't started till three years later. And no captures from the Wayback Machine show anything from this domain pointing pre-2009. Vivo just simply appears out of nowhere and just starts racking up billions of views all while getting no subscribers. Now for further context, more data did come out about this later on after I did a bit more research and essentially, Google was working in partnership with the record labels to drum up advertising business for YouTube. And in an article from readwrite.com, it was also revealed that a Google employee did anonymously whistleblow the situation. Apparently he was originally an employee for YouTube in 2007, but was hired to bot Vivo videos in 2009, in which he claims that he botted more than 20,000 videos. And what further cements this guy's testimony is when you look at the actual data on the videos. Kanye West's Heartless got his first view on December 7th, 2009, and immediately jumped to nearly 30 million views. Britney Spears' hit song from 2005, Toxic, ended up getting 33 million views in 24 hours as well. And Lady Gaga's first hit, Just Dance, got uploaded to Vivo, and we see another similar trend. However, they upped the ante nearly to 90 million views. And while we've taken a bit of a tangent from talking about Spotify, I think it's important to highlight these things that have occurred in the past whenever record labels work with a company. The music industry relies heavily on its fake it to make it strategy over and over. While this type of manipulation may be easy to spot in hindsight with a way back machine and what I'm showing you, this is still largely flown under the radar today. I think ultimately you should know that record labels still definitely do artificial manipulation of their numbers it's just a variety of new methods that we're going to cover that are harder to detect. Mm -hmm. 
Now, when I bring up two-factor authentication in regards to accounts on Spotify, you might be surprised to learn that Spotify has yet to implement any such system on their platform, despite the feature being in consideration for seemingly six years. And to be fair, you can add two-factor authentication if you choose to log in to Spotify through Facebook, but this is not Spotify itself, and the vast majority of users don't have any kind of security on their accounts. The reason behind this is unclear, but what I can say for certain is that this has definitely led to even more stream dilution on the platform. Apple Music has two-factor authentication, and while you might think this is relatively harmless as the most a hacker could do is listen to music when you're not around, this has led to an entirely separate form of streaming fraud that is far more advanced than the previous kind, and that is hacked accounts being used in streaming botnets. And this has led to an entirely underground business of selling hacked accounts to other users who don't want to pay premium. Now I will say you can definitely find these packs or bundles of accounts on the dark web, and they're usually compiled with your login information when it is leaked from a database somewhere on the internet. People who end up getting their hands on these individual database leaks will often try your information against Spotify. Another method for collecting passwords is phishing, and it's usually when you get an email that appears to be from Spotify themselves, but after the email baits you into logging in, your password is then sent off to their database instead, despite looking like an official login. And something you should know is that as far back as 2015, a Vice article demonstrated how to make a streaming botnet that made around $30 a day with free accounts. Now, while regular streaming fraud is already rampant on Spotify, there are actually a few more benefits that seem to exist from having hacked accounts on botnets. For one, it doesn't require any phones, but rather just a bit of coding knowledge. And with the hacked accounts, the streams are more valuable than free accounts. Furthermore, if you were to use your own credit card to set up 10 different Spotify accounts and pay for it yourself, then it would likely get detected by Spotify themselves and they would shut you down. But with this method, you can anonymously boost artist streams through hacked accounts, and the artist can then turn around and say, I have no idea what you're talking about. And for the record, I'm not condoning this is simply for educational purposes with this whole video, but this is far more illegal as it involves the unauthorized access of people's accounts, but it does appear that there may be some evidence that could allegedly lead you to believe that some people have been participating in this behavior. And this is far more concerning because it raises some potential questions about money laundering on Spotify, which we will touch on in a bit. But the story I have for you regarding this particular instance comes from French Montana. Now, this song was released on September 27th, 2019. The song completely flopped despite having two top artists on the track. Now, the song still managed to chart for five weeks, but eventually left the top 200 on Spotify. Then, three weeks later, it reached a new peak on Spotify, coming in at the top 21 spot. And this is interesting because a couple posts had started to gain some traction on TikTok, which were kind of used as a decoy to essentially make it seem like the song was getting popular again. And it was at this time that many people started to notice and talk about on Twitter, where many people were complaining to Spotify that their accounts were being hacked and repeatedly streaming French Montana song. Now, what made this more of a dead giveaway than it needed to be was that if the song was, in fact, gaining momentum again, you'd expect the streams to come back on both platforms, Apple Music and Spotify. But the song was at 1,192 on Apple Music and had only been going down. Now, French Montana ended up blaming 50 Cent in a very bizarre twist of events, and what makes this very hard to believe is that they only started arguing or had gotten into a conflict a couple of days prior, but the streams were bought long before that, according to the screenshots from the users on Twitter. Now, I honestly doubt that French Montana bought the streams personally, as it was likely someone from his management. But at a certain point, you have to ask if top artists are cheating the system in this way, it sets them up with perfect plausible deniability that would never result in any actual punishment. Just for perspective here though, if Justin Bieber was upfront willing to manipulate his song to the top, then you can imagine what goes on behind closed doors. Now, I decided to dig deeper to see if I could find any other recorded instances of this, and goddamn, it does appear to be far more common than I thought. Now, I actually asked you guys on Twitter a while back, and if you take out the people who don't use Spotify here, about 20% of you who do use Spotify said that your account was hacked at least sometime in the past. And I did find actual video evidence of someone's account being hacked in this case from another YouTuber by the name of John Sign, and he documented the behavior on camera to basically see how the bot functions. And I'll let him tell you in this particular instance. 
And in my case, the phone also always switched to a Chrome browser, because I mean, if, if you do those fakes, you do it on a Windows PC, that's the easiest. Or play it on Sonos, so it always switched the sound to a Chrome browser. And also the last couple of days, I had time to look a little deeper into those seven minutes that I recorded of the behavior of that phone. And I found out that it switches every 40 seconds, like exactly every 40 seconds. And as we all know, Spotify counts after 30 seconds a song as a play and, and gives, gives money to that person. And it didn't matter where I switched to, it always did the same thing. It searched for that song and it hit play on that song. So I'm 100% sure someone automated programmed this phone that got hacked to behave this way. Now, two things to note here. What appears on John's phone is her story by YG. And this video was uploaded June 24th, 2019. And because I was curious to see if this was just some one-off hacking from YG, I checked Twitter first, and quite a few accounts seemed to be having the same issue regarding this artist multiple times across 2019 and 2020. Googling the same thing came up with an article from the Seattle Times in which it wrote, a similar idea occurred to Chris Panton, a 19-year-old sociology student in California, when he was hacked in March. His hacker played an album by Los Angeles rapper YG on repeat. The first time it happened, the music started playing out of his laptop in the middle of a chemistry class. Continuing on in the article, it says, They would be trying to listen to music while I was listening to music, so they cut me off. Always with the YG album, Panton said. Searching further, another post from the Spotify subreddit here in July of 2019 shows another instance of YG playing from a Chrome browser. And finally, another post in May of 2019 it shows the exact same thing, and another user in the comments mentioned that the exact same thing was happening to them on the same exact album. And just to clarify here, I'm not accusing YG of anything, and this could potentially be something he has no idea is going on. But there seems to be multiple instances of this artist being pushed through an illegal botnet. And what's even more puzzling here is Spotify's completely complicit nature in this entire thing. There's absolutely no way they don't know this is going on, and the fact that they haven't added two-factor authentication for six years seems very, very suspicious. I will say though that if you do want to listen to Spotify without randomly giving money to people you may or may not like as an artist, you need to be able to protect your accounts, and that's why I'm so happy that Dashlane decided to sponsor today's video. Dashlane is an all-in-one password manager for all of your online accounts that only requires one master password that is only decrypted locally on your device, not held in some database. Dashlane autofills login credentials on every single website and takes the frustration out of having to reset your password every two seconds with a forgot password function. Not only does this password manager save you time with login credentials, Dashlane also helps you speed up your online shopping by autofilling shipping addresses and other payment info. Moreover, Dashlane helps you create strong passwords that are unique just in case a info breach occurs. And when any of your accounts are compromised, Dashlane notifies you as soon as it happens so you can protect your account. And to top all of that off, Dashlane's full package also includes a VPN so you can browse the web securely and view region log content, as well as dark web monitoring just in case any of your info is found leaked on the dark web. There's a reason that Dashlane has 14 million users, so instead of using multiple solutions that aren't up to industry standards, make your life safer and easier and try Dashlane for free for life on your first device by heading to dashlane.com sociable. And for the first 500 users who upgrade to Dashlane Premium, you can use my code sociable for 25% off. Thanks again to Dashlane for sponsoring this video and let's get back to Spotify. Now, before I move on from this section, a final thing I want to talk about is that these fake streams may be a way to potentially launder dirty money that is used in cryptocurrency or cash as an off-ramp, which is all the more reason that this is something that needs to be limited by two-factor authentication. Or an even crazier idea is to only give your Spotify money to people that you actually listen to each month. You know how like YouTube premium works and then there would be no incentive to bot or fraud or do any of this anymore? Anyways, getting back to money laundering, if someone was running some sort of under the table business, an easy way to clean that money would be to simply pay a botnet as long as they could get a return and the money would go from cryptocurrency or dirty cash to immediate taxable income. I can't imagine that this hasn't crossed someone's mind before and potentially someone going through a somewhat established artist would not really raise that many red flags. I know this sounds pretty ridiculous if you've never heard any of this stuff before, but it actually is something that has some history in the music industry. And there have been multiple rings associated with many different record labels that have been used to pick up and deliver certain things, certain places, and you, you know what I'm saying. Nonetheless, it's still very, very interesting.
Now for this last section, I could go on finding more and more people likely guilty of faking streams, but after finding out that Michael Jackson had some of his streams faked on YouTube, that, that kind of did it for me. What I do think is a bit more nefarious in the face of everything I've presented to you today is something I've saved for the final section of this video. Because while Spotify can blame the record labels for a bad payout structure, and they can cite something like streaming fraud as a never-ending battle, how do you explain deliberately creating fake artist profiles to not only dilute the streaming pool, but directly limit opportunity for real artists by taking away playlist spots for them? According to Daniel Eck, the CEO of Spotify, you shouldn't be in the music industry for the money. In it for the money, it's not the right um, thing to be going into. And for me, it was just all passion about music and technology and trying to marry both of them. And while everything I've shared thus far has been others contributing to theft that Spotify is just the platform for, nothing is quite as deliberate as this one. A while back in 2017, many people who began passively listening to some of Spotify's official relaxing piano and other official playlists began to notice something bizarre. Many of the artists on those playlists weren't real people, and let me introduce you to Anna Olgika, who is a part of Catfish Records. <laughs> her songs have hundreds of millions of streams, and while you might think, wow, good for her, it's only until you realize that she has no digital footprint and doesn't exist. And if you plug this photo into a reverse image search, you'll notice that this is a stock photo. And to note all the similarities here among all the fake artists who collectively have billions and billions of streams, thus further diluting the entire market share for everybody else. Now, to be fair, Spotify claimed that they never once made any fake artists and that was completely untrue. But naturally you have to ask why countless fake artists who were basically all from Sweden, where Spotify was also headquartered, were all starting to pop up on these official playlists. To which it was later revealed after this was discovered in 2017, that the company Epidemic Sound was responsible. An Epidemic, which was basically creating these tracks in-house, which is a royalty-free company, clarified that these people who made the tracks were still getting royalties from them. But they were splitting them 50-50 with Epidemic Sound. Now, while this might seem good and great, where this gets a bit shady is when you realize that Creandum, one of the very first investors in Spotify, is also someone who owns part of Epidemic Sound. So to recap, Spotify doesn't make any fake artists, they just let their investors create companies to funnel money through fake artists that they have on their official playlists. And something you should know about Spotify as a platform is that you can't pay to get onto an official Spotify playlist. It says it right on their blog and it says first things first, you cannot pay to get on an official playlist. If someone or a third party company is offering placement on a playlist in exchange for money, this is a streaming manipulation service that goes against Spotify's guidelines for music promotion. Well, I gotta admit, that's pretty weird because Spotify seems to have definitely built out an entire network of artists filling their playlists that aren't even real. I suppose you can really just add this to the list of things that Daniel Eck doesn't practice what he preaches. I like the fact that he told artists that they need to make more music to survive in this day and age, all while a mutual investor who has financial connections to the company has been leeching money out of it this whole time. I guess the music business really is a cruel and shallow money trench, but hey, maybe knowing all this stuff, we can listen to it a little bit differently. This is Barely Sociable. Have a good night.